Hi, welcome to the Andrew Buckle book review of The Incredible Hulk. This is volume two, and this is obviously Lee, Thomas, Severin, and Trimp, or Trimpe. Now this book, 824 pages, colours throughout, except of course the bonus section. There's some decent bonus items at the back, and I will show you those as well. And there's all the covers. So you can see there, all the covers that are included in this volume. And you can see there the listing, and it's uh, Incredible Hulk, 103 to 134, and annual number one. Now I paid about 58 pounds for this. Should be able to get copies, about that sort of price, 70 odd pounds as well. Just come out November, 2023. Here's the volume one. So if obviously if you're interested in that, you can see all the different issues in volume one. And of course that goes up to includes Incredible Hulk, one to six, Tales to Astonish, 59 to 101, as well as Incredible Hulk, 102. And here it is without the wraparound, so, or dust cover. You've got Incredible Hulk, you can see there, Incredible Hulk, volume two, and of course, good old Hulk on the back, and you can see there. Now, I know lots of people love it to see it being open and how it stands, and you can see there, perfectly decent, doesn't fall apart or anything, nothing like that. So let's actually go through the contents of the book. Now, also, we'll be going through the epics, because I've got a couple of epics as well. Now, the overlap, unfortunately, is a slight problem with that. It always is. And you can see all the various people involved. Obviously, Stan Lee, Roy Thomas, and all the way. Bill Everett as well, which quite surprised me, I must admit. Writer there. But Maria Severin, Herb Trimpe. I love his work. I must admit, it's, I didn't at the time. But now I really appreciate it a lot more. Though saying that, there are a lot of comics in here that I really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed at the time as well. And there's all the inkers and letterers, colourists, etc. Obviously, in this case, uncredited still. Always slightly disappoints me that when it says that. Here's the contents. And you can see it goes from 1968 all the way through. Of course, it's got some introductions as well. But of course, they're from Marvel Masterworks. I wish they would include some new ones as well. That would be just brilliant, but they never do. But still, well, I must do occasionally. But you can see all the way through to 1970, December 1970. You can see there, Herb Trimpe. Would be nice, actually. <laughs> Would be nice if they actually put how to say these people's names, because I never know. And the first one, not one of the greatest stories, The Space Parasite. But before I go any further, the Epic Collections. So if you've got the Epic Collections already and you're getting the Omnibus, there is a slight issue with the overlap. It's not actually that good. So... This one is probably the one that you, if you've got it and you want to get rid of one, obviously, and don't need both, then you can see you've got the list in there. And it's, this one's 97 to 101, obviously covered by the first one. And Incredible Hulk 102 to 117. And that's the issue, as well as Annual 1. Though this does include not brand Ek 9. I don't know if that's included in the omnibus. I don't think it is. But this one, if I was going to get rid of any will be probably be this volume. Of course, this one, this is volume four, and you can see the issues, it goes from 118 to 137. So it's slightly, the la overlap is not perfect. So you'll have to wait, of course, for the Hulk Omnibus volume three, if you're going to go for that. And you can see Marvel Super Heroes 16. I don't think that's included in here. There is Sp Dr. Banner on the underground, everyone looking at him, he's always sweating away. He's obviously thinking, you know, I'm going to turn into the Hulk at any point. Now, that wouldn't be very good on the underground, would it? On the train. And there he is, battling away with the space parasite. I think there were lots of stories like that. In fact, near enough, all of them, actually, where he's battling someone like the Sandman, who's bashing away. I think the Hulk stories quite often, that's all. The Rhino, of course, the next issue. There, the Rhino, quite an impressive looking Rhino there. The Rhino. But personally, much better as a match with... Spider-Man than with the Hulk. I'm afraid he really didn't. <laughs> there's not much of a chance for him. Of course, he thinks he's got a chance, but of course, he's got all the covers, which is always great. This Monster Unleashed. And this one, Bill Everett, script by Bill Everett. Really good story as well. Really like that one. But again, another sort of one where it's a sort of powerful being attacking the Hulk. However, and of course, old Ross there, sort of at the background, talking to the media. As always, of course, with these omnibuses, they include these, the good old letters pages. I love the letters pages, though I wish they would also include the checklist and also the bullpen comments, obviously, by Stanley Stan's soapbox. That would have been really great as well. They never do. Occasionally you see them, but very, very rarely. So there, the Hulk, the Mandarin, the Mandarin turns up. Again, another villain, obviously, more from Iron Man. He's, he's actually quite decent in terms of a villain for 
the Hulk, and of course, if he isn't just the Mandarin with his power rings, he's got a massive creature bashing away at the Hulk yet again. Of course, I will win, etc., etc., until, of course, they don't. Then, of course, as usual, he ends up being... He's either controlled in this a lot, or he's been... Basically, he's convinced that he must go off and bash Thunderbolt Ross or something. He goes off to the base and then realises, oops, I've been... And then, of course, something else happens and he actually battles the real villain. I think there were a few of those sort of stories. Probably one of the most spectacular and quite often used. There's many ones that use this one. Battles the Inhumans, the Hulk there, looking pretty well crushed. Brilliant Steranko. Who are you? I'm the Hulk. Oh, I am Hulk. <laughs> Not the Hulk. He completely misses the off. They all turn up a bit later as well. And a lovely Kazar, or Kazar. The Lost Land, or not the hidden. No, the Lost Land of Kazar. Kazar. Oh, whatever. The Monster and the Man Beast. Oh, we have a few of these sort of creatures. <laughs> Umbu, the Unliving. Probably more a character that should be in Doctor Strange, I would have thought, but still. Umbu, the Unliving. Or maybe a character out of King Carl, I think. Quite a decent green skin grab bag there. I really enjoyed this one. Shanghai in space. You had this sort of super massive creature that was blasting away. A uh, decent, decent story. Always shows you the different Incas, how they affect that. Because obviously you've got the earlier Herb Trimpe, or Trimp, and then you've got Dan Adkins doing the inking. Really, really different work. Very impressive. Oh, he's coming back to Earth. Where fall the shifting sands? And of course, you can guess, it's the good old Sandman. Gain another character from another comic. Obviously, Fantastic Four. As well as, of course, Spider-Man, I guess. And there is the Sandman, of course, attacking a base, doing something, <laughs> as he usually does. And of course, meets the Hulk. Not particularly ending well for him. And you've got the Mandarin back as well. And then the leader. I always enjoyed these ones. Lo, the leader lives. Though I think sometimes, of course, they overuse some of these characters. But I thought that the leader... I always felt that they could have done some more with the leader. One of those characters that had a bit more potential than what he was used. The Eve of Annihilation. I said, I always felt, why didn't he just build an army of all these things? He, you know, he had one. Surely he could have built a few more. You know, he always seemed to lose them and all bit defeated. Oh, they can beat the whole... Oh, no, they can't. And then, well, hang on. Why not just have another one? Even more powerful... And then another one, World's End. I love this one. It's one of my favourite, I think one of my earliest Hulk stories I ever bought, The Incredible Hulk, 118 with Submariner. Thoroughly enjoyable story. Dorma, stand you forth. And Maximus turns up at the mercy of Maximus the Mad. Which was slightly, well, obviously, given away, I suppose, with the cover. But still, you've got this creature at the start, a bit, sort of character, a bit like the Iron Man one. I was just thinking of the early Iron Man story where he's zapping everyone in a particular village. I always love also the way they always called him the Mindless Hulk. And you think, well, the Hulk's not particularly mindless. That's one thing that they always seem to say, the Mindless Hulk. He always seems to work out things eventually. Kill him, as it says here. Kill the Hulk. This is a great one. The Glob. Obviously about the same time as a certain other character that turned up as well. But very... Uh, enjoyable character. Actually, I suppose a bit like the man thing, isn't he? In many ways as well. And of course, you've got a classic Thing versus the Hulk. You always have to have those. And it's the last time. This is your last fight. Unlikely, of course. And of course, come <laughs> the leader comes along. No more the monster. You know it's not going to last. Thing is, the leader can always control people very easily. I'm not saying why he just doesn't use that ability more often, but he seems to completely forget that he's got that ability to zap various people. This is a lovely one. It's actually mentioned in one of the introductions that this is a great story. I agree. The Wrath of the Rhino. Real brilliant story. A bit like the Avengers, the wedding, of course, the Wasp and Yellow Jacket. Just a great story. And of course, you've got the leader there, sort of a bit angry there, thwarted his best laid plans. And he, of course, goes through the list of all the various people that he thinks could help. But no. He always then, of course, chooses a slightly lesser power character. Actually, he probably would have been a better character. The Absorbing Man. I suppose because he was out in space. Probably the leader just didn't think about him. And of course, he hadn't at that point actually battled. He's obviously more a Thor character than the Hulk. This was a brilliant one. Where Stalks the Nightcrawler. Really love that one. Of course, the, basically the origin of the Defenders. And it's just a classic with Doctor Strange, Submariner. Just brilliant, brilliant tale. And another character bashing away at the Hulk. Mogul in the sort of mogul. I'm not certain how you actually say his name. But this one, of course, got three, three of the most sinister supervillains. Well, a couple of supervillains anyway. 
and a truly classic old Avengers one. And in this corner, the Avengers. And the glob is back because of, of course, good old leader. And we've got the Iron Man as well. Hold your fire. It's all over. The Hulk is dead. I think they had that cover quite a few times. The Hulk is dead. No, he isn't. No, he isn't. You just can't destroy the Hulk. He's completely impossible. Even when he's Bruce Banner, if he was sort of killed him, I'm certain he'd still come back. I have to say, slightly oddly drawn Iron Man. And the Hydra. And a slightly non-villain Draxon. I think they did lots of these ones where he goes to various places and battles against some leader that obviously thinks he can beat the Hulk. Everyone's tried. <laughs> How are you going to do it? The demon and the dictator. And after that, you've got some absolutely brilliant extras. Actually, I really genuinely love the extras in this one. So you've got that inked page there. You've got an unused cover. But these, I think, are the best thing. Look at that, a lovely penciled page as well. Just great. As well as another brilliant penciled page as well. And always, when you look at them, you always think, well, you can work out why they didn't use that page, that sketch page. I mean, it's great as it is. It's still, I think, the one that was actually used much better than that one. Obviously, the glob is too big. The Hulk is like a minor character in his own comic. And also, I love all these as well. Absolutely brilliant little sketches. And also, some Marvel superheroes. Well, I absolutely love this. This is an absolutely brilliant Hulk omnibus. Now, I'm not the world's greatest fan of Hulk. I've got a number of Hulk volumes, and I've bought lots of Hulk comics over the years, but... I think this one is full of some really good stories, a good 70% classic tales that I thoroughly enjoyed. There's a few Duffo ones, but still a very nice omnibus collection. So there is Marvel Omnibus, The Incredible Hulk, Volume 2, really worth picking up. 